What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be doing a video inside because it sucks outside. So I thought I would go over a topic that I've been getting a lot of questions about. I thought I'd talk about some revolvers, but I didn't want it to be a super serious video today. I just wanted to give you my opinion on my personal favorite revolvers and why. So on the channel, we get to review lots of cool firearms and I get to not only touchy-feely a lot of them, but I get to shoot a lot of them at least a thousand rounds. So I have a pretty good perspective on what I like and what I don't, what works and what doesn't for me. So I've got a lot of rounds down range over all of these guns. Most of these guns you've seen first shots and thousand round reviews of, or at least first shots. Some of these guns we have thousand round reviews in the works, but it does take a while. Also, there will be a few honorable mentions, but all of these guns will be at least defensive caliber. So they're not gonna be any 22s or anything like that. That might be a separate video. This video is gonna be 38 special and up. For all of you guys that might be buying a home defense revolver, kind of a do-it-all ranch revolver, or maybe a concealed carry revolver, there'll be something in here for each of you guys. Now remember, this isn't the best revolvers, this is just my personal favorite, so there is gonna be looks involved and other personal bias as well that isn't normally in my top five. Now before we get in the video, I did wanna mention my Patriot supporters. My Patriot supporters, purchased a lot of the guns on the table here. We buy a lot of guns and ammunition with the patron dollars and I really appreciate you guys. So I mention you in every video because you help us stay the most non-biased gun channel on the internet. We try to give you the most honest information possible and we appreciate you supporting us. If you wanna go and support us, all you gotta do is go to the link in the description below and sign up. Also, you can use Super Thanks if you want. It's YouTube's version. A lot of people have been using that lately and we appreciate that. And finally, I wanna mention a local homeless shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So please go down to the description and and there's a link that brings you right to the donate page. You just click that link and donate those kids. Without further ado, my seven favorite revolvers. This is the Smith & Wesson Model 14 K38 Target Master. This little guy I happened upon at my local store by accident. I was over at Mr. Guns and they happened to have one of these used. I obviously don't think these are in production anymore. These are pretty old. But these guns have seen some military service, they've seen some police service, and they are an absolutely exceptionally accurate firearm overall. This one's in 38 Special, and I like the Smith & Wesson lockup. I like how it spins. I like the fact that this thing's like 50 years old and it still feels brand new and it still feels tight and it feels like it was manufactured and machined very well. On top of that, all the controls are worn in as they would be over the course of you know a few decades. And that's one of the things that I'm always surprised about when people say they don't like used guns. Because for me personally, if it is a quality gun, all you're doing is getting a gun that's just gonna work slightly better because the trigger's gonna be worn in, polished, the hammer, the controls are all gonna be very smooth. So as long as the gun was taken care of and used properly, a used gun is almost better because it's less and you get a little bit more out of it. This thing has some target sights. It has a very long barrel, which gives you really good accuracy. Uh, we have a first shot to this as well where I shoot this like 100 yards. I'm gonna try a 100 yard shot with <laughs> double action. Just because it's old doesn't mean it doesn't work. Uh, six shots of 38 Special isn't great, but it still isn't bad either. And for a target gun or a plinking gun, this is absolutely one of my favorite. It feels like I'm shooting history every time I shoot it. Uh, and I really love how the gun looks. I love how it shoots. I love the recoil control uh, because 38 Special is absolutely nothing. And it just feels super fun to shoot, reload, and shoot again. The classic wood grips with the Smith & Wesson emblem on them look really cool as well. The grip's are very small, but weirdly, even for my large hands, relatively comfortable. Because unlike a semi-auto, there's actually a good bit of room between you and your trigger reach, so it does feel very good and very intuitive, even in single action, to shoot the gun. On top of that, it has about, I don't know, a two and a half pound single action trigger pull that feels like a freaking 1911. So it's honestly hard to miss with this thing. In at number six, we're gonna be talking about the Ruger GP100. If I was gonna mention two guns for people to buy beginner like home defense guns that were to be a revolver, this would be one that would be in the conversation. The Ruger GP100 is well known for its long-term durability, reliability, parts quality, and overall manufacturing excellence. And the Ruger GP100 I have in front of me is no exception. We've had zero failures with this, zero timing issues. This is a seven shot 357 Magnum with a four inch barrel, which I think is probably the overall best size for like a do it all revolver. If you wanted like a do it all ranch revolver, this would be a damn good choice. Especially in the stainless like all weather configuration with the rubber grips with the wood inlay. It's very functional, except it still looks really good. A lot more functional than your average, like classic looking revolver. It's got a good size grip, 
So you get a good grip on the gun to control that recoil and get that accuracy. It goes double single action. It's got a good double action trigger that's maybe around seven or eight pounds. And then it's got a pretty pristine single action trigger as well that is only a couple of pounds. So I love the stainless look. I love that you can drop dots on these. I love that you can get these in tons of different configurations. And on top of that, Ruger's customer service with these guns are absolutely excellent. And of course, a four inch, seven round 357 Magnum is pretty sweet. Those guns can be had for I think around five to 600 bucks, making them one of the best buys on the table. And might as well just go for the second one so you guys can compare if you're looking for, let's say, a do-it-all home defense revolver. And at number five, we have the Smith & Wesson 686. Now, the Smith & Wesson 686 is a gun that I'm very familiar with because it was the first revolver that I ever shot a lot. I think it was the first revolver I bought, I've ever bought for myself besides like my dad's collection and things that were given to me and I've loved it ever since. This one has a stainless six inch barrel with HD uh, front sight and a uh, adjustable target rear sight, double single action, 357 Magnum, just like the GP100. It's got an awesome, extremely comfortable rubber grip. Now it doesn't look as good as the wood inlaid rubber or especially the wood grip, but it is more functional and that is the way it is. You get a really good grip, especially in all weather conditions. If it's wet, if it's cold, if it's rainy, you're still gonna be able to get a good grip to control that 357 mag. You have a six inch barrel with a super long sight radius, so you have crazy good accuracy with this gun, especially for the price of like five to six to 700 bucks, depending on your location. I'm just simply telling you that what I bought the guns for at the time I bought them for, because I honestly didn't check to see what 686s are going for now, especially in your state. You have to remember I live in rural Iowa, so these prices are definitely gonna vary. Uh, I love the, uh, the way that the Smith opens. I love that you get this solid lockup and that stainless look and total functionality of a gun that has a literal thousand rounds through it with no issues whatsoever unrelated to ammo. So it's a very reliable, very durable, very rugged platform that is gonna work all the time. And it's big, it's mean looking, it looks freaking cool, it shoots awesome, and it's one of the cheapest revolvers on the table. All right, in at number four, we're gonna get into concealed carry, and we're gonna get into it in a big way with the Ruger LCR. I absolutely love this gun. This one's in 357 Magnum. I've done plenty of Instagram videos about this. We did a first shots about this, and it is my personal favorite little pocket revolver. Now, Smith makes some good ones, some good air weights. Colt makes some good ones. I understand that. This is my own personal preference, just based on how the gun feels, how I shot it, how accurate I was with it, and how reliable I feel the gun is. This is a five shot with a two inch barrel, which means you gotta be pretty good with it to get good accuracy. That being said, we've shot this gun at like 75 yards with its trough sight. Nope. <laughs> One's good enough. Because it has a fiber optic front and it doesn't have too bad of a rear sight and it has an oddly good single action trigger for a tiny little revolver. And the double action is really nice as well with a pretty slick reset. I can actually shoot this gun faster than a lot of large frame revolvers that I have in 38 Special. Now in 357, you can certainly still uh, get after it. However, you're gonna get a lot more recoil with this air weight than you are with something like these guns. You have to remember, most of the guns that I've shown so far have been target or home defense guns that are like 44, 46 ounces and above. Whereas this one, I mean, you're looking at in the 20 ounce category. I don't remember exactly, but it's very, very light. It's on par with like compact nine millimeters and stuff like that. What I like about a compact revolver for, uh, for self-defense and for concealed carry is where I think this really shines is even though you do have a five round cylinder, it is five rounds of 357 Magnum. So if you put them in the right spot, they're gonna work real well on almost everything, including some larger game. Now with the two inch barrel, you're gonna lose a lot of velocity off that 357 Magnum and people are gonna say, well, you might as well shoot 38, trust me. 357 Magnum out of a two inch barrel is still pretty good. And the trigger works really well, you can shoot it really fast. Because of the rubber grip that comes with the gun, you can control it really well. But the thing I like most about it is how lightweight and how snag free it is. Uh, the double action trigger is a good safety. So honestly for me, I like the fact that it's super snag free and if I was using it in close quarters, I have no issues with the slide reciprocating or anything like that. You can shoot these you know, through clothing, you can shoot these through purses, pockets, and all that cool stuff. And 
I personally really like how the gun opens and closes because I like the Ruger system, but I like the fact that you can thumb the hammer single action for that precise shot if you need it. If you have that extra half a second and you can present the gun, thumb in a single action, you can get like a two and a half pound trigger pull on a very lightweight revolver. And again, these come out for about five to 600 bucks, making them very affordable. If you're looking for a concealed carry revolver, I would check this one out. Now, if you wanna be the king of revolver concealed carry, you're gonna to have to check out our number three, and that is gonna be this bad mother right here, the Smith & Wesson 327 eight shot 357 Magnum with a two inch barrel. This is actually a performance center, so this is basically everything you could possibly throw at a concealed carry revolver. <laughs> uh, it does have the tiny little snub nose uh, two inch barrel, uh, but we still have had good accuracy out of this. I've even hit targets with this at 100 freaking yards. Pretty good. But it's because of the quality of this revolver and it's because of how good the trigger is. People will say that two inch barrels do not stabilize the bullet correctly. And you're probably right about that. But the steel doesn't lie. And when I can hit the steel at 100 yards, it tells me that I have enough accuracy to use this to seven yard for concealed carry distances without a problem, regardless of what the YouTube comments say. So I'm gonna go with the fact that I feel more than comfortable with my two inch 357 Magnum. And if the first shot doesn't do it, again, you have eight more coming, or seven more coming. Sorry, I went to public school. You can also uh, thumb the hammer again, just like the previous Ruger, for an awesome single action, except you're gonna get an even better one on the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. This gun's about four to $500, even $600 more than the Ruger because of the looks, because of the coating, and because of the action job that Smith & Wesson does out of the factory to give you an unbelievably light one and a half, two, two-ish pound trigger pull on the single action, and then you get a good solid eight or nine pound single, or double action, it feels like, to my, uh, my meaty little trigger gauge there. You also get uh, their Performance Center wood grips with the checkering on them, which looks really cool, and overall the gun is so slicked up and amazing uh, that you're not gonna have any problems shooting it. Now, one detriment to this gun is even though it's a 357 Magnum, it is really light. Now, I, lo I know it looks much bigger, than the Ruger, and it's just a hair heavier, but not much. I mean, I can list the uh, weight uh, in an annotation, that way you guys know, but it's a super lightweight gun that you could uh, carry really, really easy. The funny part is when I bought this gun, I got this used at Mr. Guns as well, and it actually came with a Kydex uh, inside the waistband appendix carry holster, which I think is freaking awesome for a revolver. So I do actually carry this every once in a while, so of course it had to be on the list. All right, so now we're at the last two. And for the last two, I wanted just shit that looks good. Stuff that I like to look at and stuff that I like to shoot just for fun. They might not be the best defensive guns, but they're not bad either. But for me, they just melt my freaking heart. And a couple of these guns were guns I've wanted to own for a long time. And I wanted to give a quick honorable mention first, just simply because it could be in here. But this is the actual Colt Anaconda, one of the coolest looking guns I've ever bought. And I haven't done a first shots yet, or it might actually be on this list. So I wanted to reference the fact that we have this for the channel. And we'll be doing a review on it here shortly. But I absolutely love this gun because it's the 44 mag version of the gun that you're gonna see right now, which is the Colt Python. This is actually a 2020 one model, I think, maybe a 2022. Uh, one of the newer generation of Pythons that came out with obviously all the changes. This one's not one of the hand fit ones from like 1975 because I'm not uh, not that wealthy. <laughs> These are only about 2,000 or about 1,600 bucks and I think that's good enough for me personally, especially considering with modern machining and stuff, I think these things are almost as good. They had some problems out of the gate, but they're pretty good now. The Colt single, or the Colt Python is obviously, if you guys are familiar with any TV, the gun that Rick Grime uses in The Walking Dead and pretty much every other movie that has a revolver in it because it's a very iconic look. On top of that, in the 70s and 80s, when, got, when guys were performing with revolvers still competitively, the Colt had a reputation for not only being one of the most well-made guns, but being one of the fastest and most accurate guns as well. We have a vent rib barrel, which is very iconic on the gun that you can actually mount some scope mounts to. We have a full lug on the bottom of the uh, barrel there that lowers the recoil when you shoot this. The actual finish on this gun, although some people say they like the old ones better, is certainly not bad. The stainless look on this, this mirror finish, you can basically see yourself in. We have an HD front sight with a with a uh, target rear just like on the 686. Also a six inch barrel just like on the 686. They do make a four and a two inch barrel, but come on, she likes the sticks 
by the six. I kind of like it. We have a six inch 357 Magnum cylinder that actually rotates in reverse by comparison to the Smith & Wesson, so just be aware of that. But I think the real star of the show on the Colt Python besides its looks is gonna be its trigger. The double action trigger pull on the Colt Python is pretty freaking incredible for a gun that has never seen a custom shot. And on top of that, the single action is even better. I mean, it's really impressive. It's kind of hard to miss with this gun. It looks freaking beautiful. It's reliable, durable, heavy, and it works extremely well. It works just as well as a wall hanger as it would for a defensive pistol. And on top of that, it has a reputation for its stopping power with the 357 Magnum. So it might actually scare some people too, which is kind of cool. Uh, we have a wood grip on the gun. It's not as functional as the rubber, but it does look super good. And the whole gun just has a fucking badass look to it that I can't deny and I absolutely love. Not only looking at, but shooting. Almost, almost sounds like a calling gun video. Sorry, my bad. With all that sexy gun talk. Well, revolvers look good. That's like one of the best thing about revolvers, that they look so good, especially considered, especially compared to like modern semi-autos. Like if you like bring a Glock out here, it looks like a fucking thing of Tupperware compared to like a Colt Python. You wanna talk about history? You wanna talk about Colt history? This is my number one. This is my Colt Single Action Army 1873 Gen 3 357 Magnum. Now, I don't know if most of you have ever owned or shot one of these, one of the real ones. You can get Emberti clones and stuff like that that work really well, arguably work as well, but they're certainly not as cool and they certainly don't look as good. This is my case hardened engraved version. This is actually the holy grail of my collection. And this is the gun that I'm like, ah, every time I look at it. I don't shoot it that much, but I show it off a lot. And every time people come over to my house, I'm like, ooh, look what I have. <laughs> my Ivory Grip 357 Magnum uh, Colt Single Action Army. This has a seven and a half inch barrel. And even though this freaking gun's like 150 years old, I can still hit at like 75 and 100 yards with it, which is pretty incredible. It's due to the uh, barrel, it's due to the trigger. Obviously it's a single action so the single action trigger pull on this thing is absolutely amazing uh, the grip doesn't fit me the best but hey you have 150 year old ergonomics and you're gonna have to deal with that you still have six shots of 357 magnum just like a lot of the other guns on the table the problem is is you're gonna have to fan the hammer like your favorite cowboy movie in order to get those rounds out but it's certainly doable one of the interesting things about revolvers like this is they're able to like kind of slam fire so all you have to do is kind of hold your finger on the trigger I don't know if you've ever seen them guys like Bob Munden they shoot really really fast the way they do that actually is with their fingers and they run their fingers across like that and they fan the hammer each time individually Individually with their hands so they can go bop, 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 like that and you can actually shoot these faster than you can double action revolvers if you know the right technique I'm not good at that but we are gonna be doing a video about that at some point or at least I'm gonna attempt that um, I know that some of those guns are designed differently the sears are different and all that stuff but I'm certainly gonna try in this I'm gonna try to my beater in Berti. I actually have an in Berti, that's why I mentioned it that is like the the gun I shoot and then I practice on and then I shoot this very rarely because it's very expensive it came in its own case and it for sure is the most beautiful gun that I own in my personal opinion and aside of its beauty aside of its still functionality 150 years later these guns really did change and influence the way American culture and the way America spread across the continent. This was one of the highest produced and most successful revolvers of its time. It was used by military, it was used by trappers, it was used by like anybody that needed a good quality pistol, they generally erred toward this. Now the original chambering was I think 45 Long Colt, but uh, chamberings also varied throughout time. And there's other guns that compare to it, but for me personally, I like the look, I like the feel, and I like the history of the Colt single action. Now I did want to mention quick a couple of guns that I've always wanted, I just have never owned, and that's going to be the Smith & Wesson Schofield, uh, Jesse James's guns, I've always wanted one of those, and I've always wanted a Lamat as well, I just haven't got around to it yet, so maybe if I get one of those two guns, next year's list on this might be a little bit different. Who knows? But for now, these are my favorite revolvers, and that's why. Obviously, it's all personal opinion, but hey, hopefully it helped you out. And if not, hopefully it was some cool content that you guys enjoyed. If you wanna see more revolver stuff, let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. You gonna spin around? You want me to spin? It looked like you were spinning on the stool. Mm. <laughs> At number seven.